welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. We have Craig Burley, Shaka Hislop and myself, Kay Murray. We have a lot to talk about as well because club football returns this weekend. In fact, you don't even need to wait that long because tomorrow we've got some big games to look forward to. One of them being the Bundesliga returning with an absolute bang. Those two teams at the top of the table, Bayer Leverkusen and Bayern Munich, both perfect so far this season facing off at the Allianz Arena on Friday. A look at the odds here. Just remember that they did meet back in March. Leverkusen won that game, but it was away from home for Bayern, however. Let's welcome in Jan Agafiotov to talk more about this matchup. Because, Jan, it's fair to say that this is the first big test this season for Thomas Tuchel and Bayern. Oh, test well, for me as well. Just yet. Yet. Okay. It's the first big test for me as well. I'm going all the way to Germany and I'm doing for you guys. So I'm looking forward to that. But as you were saying, this is a big one. Uh, Sabi Alonso coming into a club with no cultural winning and he's all about winning. And that's winning mentality. And then you have people who say that Bayern should have signed Victor Boniface and not Harry Kane. There is so many duels in this, this game. So it's absolutely a game to look forward to. Let's talk about this then, because we asked you guys who your favourites are to win this. Jan's actually gone for Leverkusen. You've gone for Bayern, Craig. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, at home, you know, the hurricane factor. Uh, I know they have the issues, and, and Tuchel said a few things during the international break that apparently didn't go down too well, and, and Leverkusen have started brilliantly. And Chabi Alonso, and I've said this, is almost, I get a feeling he's in a shot window for bigger jobs than Bayer. Uh, looking at it, the Real Madrid one that's going to come up that he has been mentioned for before, maybe that's a little bit further away, but but yeah, I, uh, I'm i expecting Bayern to be strong and Bayern to get, get the three points. I, I think that's the thing, Bayern are at home. There, there, there's no denying that ever since Javi Alonso took over at Leverkusen, how good they've been. And, and it really has been almost a joy to watch how, how they've developed and, and that winning culture that, that they've developed. Um, but we are still talking Bayern Munich. And, and while they, they had the blip against Leipzig um, in, in, the, in the Super Cup to start this season, you, you just feel that ever since Harry Kane has been fully included, that Bayern have, have improved. And, and while he's, he's different from Robert Lewandowski, you're starting to see that, that old Bayern Munich start to tick again. Two incredible teams, as, as, the, t as the table will attest, but this just comes down to home advantage for, for me. So why have you got Leverkusen winning then, Jan? Uh, I guess, first of all, it's a dream that we will have a fight for the, for the title. But it's also the way that uh, Leverkusen and the way the, the, the team is created. They have some brilliant young players in Florian Wirtz, who is now back after his injury. And especially when we know how important that position is for a lot of clubs at the moment, striking, scoring the goals. I think anybody that's a handful in that position and is scoring goals and is a good age and uh, they see value for money, which I'm sure Leverkusen... A bit like Frankfurt and Kula Moani, don't want to lose, uh, didn't want to lose him, uh, but did. Uh, and Leverkusen here, obviously, they, they, there's not an issue for them until, until at least January, I would imagine, the summer. Uh, but these are a premium. You know, Harry Kane was a premium. Uh, Victor Osman, I suppose, is a premium at Napoli. There are, there are a few others, and, and this, is, this is one of them. And, you know, we talked about Man United and looking at players, and they've signed young Rasmus Hoyland, who looks as if he might be a a real handful going forward, but he's just starting. This guy's hit the ground running here, and that's good news for Leverkusen. And it's going to be a big test. You know, maybe the biggest test so far for this uh, back four of, of, of Bayern Munich. We thought De Ligt was going to start the season, but it's not been him. Uh, Apomacana has been in there with Kim. And this is going to be a big test for them because this guy's powerful, he's quick, and he's obviously scoring goals. And, and, and credit to Xavier Alonso for spotting, spotting new talent. In, in the summer that we talk, we spoke a lot about a striker merry-go-round and, and who would be spending big money, whether it's on Harry Kane or, or Victor Ossiman. He goes and he picks a bonny face, nine in, in 32 in Belgium last season, and f fits so well into this Leverkusen side and hit the, and hit the ground running, as, as, as Craig says. So while there are very talented players or, or strikers out there who are commanding a lot of money, there are still those gems to be found, and, and Javi Alonso certainly found one. Yeah, so let's just get to that point that you talked about with Matthijs de Ligt. I want to speak to you about that, Jan, because it does seem as though Tuchel isn't a fan of him and that his choice centre-back pairing right now is, as Craig mentioned, Upa Meccano and Kim Min-Jae. 
Well, there is a, it's a funny thing over the career of De Ligt. Remember back in the days, Manchester United apparently didn't go for him because they saw his father and he looked too fat. <laughs> and it's, it's a real story. <laughs> that, that was the thing. So they thought he would be too, too big and all that kind of thing. Then he went to Juventus uh, and he was signed in by Bayern Munich, seen as the superstar at the back. Kim was one of the most impressive centre-halves, if not the best centre-half last season. So he will be in there. Uh, but Tuchel have seen, he has uh, do, done his analysis of the team last season and he has to see where his need to be improved. Upamakano, mm, I'm not 100% sure of him either because there is always a mistake somewhere. There is always something he's doing. But at the moment, Tuchel thinks that he's too slow on the ball, that he's doing too many passes sideways, not going forward enough. And you know the modern centre half, you need a centre half to get the ball, try to get it into midfield, try to get it. The, the, through the strikers who's doing the pressure pressurize of, of, of from the opposition and at the moment Tuchel doesn't trust him and he plays with two others that is Tuchel's season this season is is the same as Goretzka he, he doesn't trust him and i think a manager got to trust you and and uh, till till one of the center half is is injured and then you have to trust him of course but Delict is not in the team uh, at the moment Open Makano and Kim seems to be the preferred choices when, when Apamecano finishes the season in the way that he did last year, and yet, and as Jan said, making mistake after mistake, and, he, and, he, and it got worse, particularly in the bigger games. When he finishes like that, when Tuchel's in there, and yet he, he, after a pre-season, he, he still sees him as his first choice. Not that he's a bad player, he's not. But he really struggled. And I think when you're a player in Dillette, when you're seeing a man who's made... And struggled like Apomacano has getting in before you. It tells a story. It tells a story that he just doesn't fancy him. Personally, myself, I don't think Delecht is mobile enough. I, I, I really don't. I'm not saying he's super slow, but I think as a centre half these days, back in the old days, you could be a big slow centre back because you're probably yeah. going to be facing a big slow centre forward. Maybe we have one of those on TV tonight. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you know, now, nowadays, nowadays as a defender. I, I, and a fullback, those days have gone. These players are super quick these days, and you have to be really mobile as a defender. And I think he just delicts that as I think he just lacks a little bit in that department. Upa Meccano is quick. You can't take that yeah, away from him. As is, as is yeah. Kim saying that. But I, Jan is absolutely right. Upa Meccano has a mistake in him all day long. The thing that I like about Delict, who's, who's grown on me o over the years, um, I, I, I felt he evolved a lot during, during his time in, in, in Italy. He, he's a defender who likes to defend. And, and uh, oftentimes, while we were sitting and we're talking about centre-backs and how quickly, the, how quickly they, they could pass the ball out from the back and whether they're comfortable with the ball at their feet, Delict has that more kind of old-style feel about him. As just someone who is genuinely interested in just defending, keeping the ball out the back of the net. And, and there's value to that. I, I think Delict just has to bide his time. I think that's kind of his mindset from, from what he said he's taking right now. And you get an opportunity. When that opportunity comes, it's up to him, it's up to, him to take it. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.